Back again, tech fam. Welcome back to the channel. I got a few tips for becoming a junior system administrator. Five technologies to know, five soft skills to have, and 10 common junior system administrator interview questions you might run into. If it sound interesting, hold fast. All right, we back fam. Glad you stuck around. Now you know what to do with all the buttons and everything. So let's just get right into this, right? Now you might say, why you say junior system administrator instead of entry level system administrator? Because in my mind, there's no such thing as an entry level system administrator. I don't even know if I've ever seen that on a job application. Uh, someone might say it, but to me, there is no such thing. The entry level for system administration is help desk. That's your entry level. So if you ain't got help desk, you ain't the junior administrator, right? Now, you might ask, well, can I just become a system administrator without going to help desk? Anything is possible, but I wouldn't even advise that because there is so much depth of knowledge that you're going to cover on help desk and basic PC hardware and software that if you skip it and go straight to system administrator and dive here in as system administrator, one, it's going to be harder to learn the system administrator information because they're going to be referring to stuff that you should have learned with your experience on help desk. And um, two, you're going to have a big knowledge gap. And so you're not going to be as valuable as your peers. So you don't want to do that. And I, and that is my assessment for all of the higher certifications. You know, IT career is like building blocks. You got to start with a foundation and then you build your way up to the specialities, you know, particular areas. But you got to have that foundation underneath you. It just makes you a better IT professional. So that's why we call level one system administrators, junior system administrators. It's not really an entry level position. You need to have some kind of base underneath you before you really try to head towards system administration. So what kind of technologies should you know if you want to be a successful junior system administrator? Well, I got five. One, Windows Server and Active Directory. Two, Server Virtualization. Three, Basic Networking. Four, all the skills from the help desk, soft skills and hard. And five, to put you over the top, PowerShell. You get them five or most of them five, you definitely headed in the right direction. Now, what are five soft skills that are a must if you want to be a junior system administrator. And really these are a must in IT period, but you definitely got, cause you're going to get them on the entry level IT, on the help desk, desk side support, any kind of customer service or customer facing job, you'll get some of these, but you definitely got to have these. And they are one customer service and customer interaction skills. You gotta be able to know how to deal with people, talk to people, explain things to people, calm people down, and communicate effectively with people. Two, written and verbal communication skills. Definitely gotta be able to um, articulate thoughts both verbally and in writing. And you gotta be able to explain complicated and complex ideas and technologies to people who may not be as tech savvy or may not have the breadth of vocabulary that others may have. So you gotta be able to uh, communicate effectively across a wide range of audiences. Three, attention to detail. You gotta have attention to detail because you may be looking at logs, and you could miss something. You're trying to troubleshoot issues on networks and with computers and with users and time is of the essence. So um, paying attention to detail will keep you on track and keep you from uh, wasting time. Four, 
the ability to work well with others because you may be on a team. In fact, you'll probably most likely will be on a team. So you need to be able to work with people, get along with people, share ideas with people, stuff like that. And five, organizational and prioritization skills. You got to be organized because you may be dealing with two or three different things at the same time, two or three different fires, two or three different users, two or three different software. You got to be able to prioritize what is most important, what is mission critical. Do I do this task first or this task first? Which one is the most important? Which one is going to have the most impact? So if you got them five technologies, you know, in your hand and you got them five soft skills in your toolkit, you well on your way to becoming a uh, junior system administrator, right? If you're not new, brand new to IT, you've been developing these skills for a little while, you know, maybe you came in, uh, maybe you was working uh, desktop support or system support, or maybe you was on the help desk and you know, you did that for a year or two years. And now, you know, you ready to see what else is out there. You ready to step it up, move up in technology. And so um, system administration is the logical next step. It's just like moving up a ladder. You got your foundation built, the skills that you need. Now you're going to move it up a notch. And so what are some common junior system administrator interview questions that you might run into when you interviewing, trying to step it up to sysadmin? Well, I got 10 of them for you and we're going to get right into them. So the first one is what is Active Directory? Active Directory is a service of Windows Server. Specifically, it is an LDAP database and LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. It's combined with other services in the Windows Server operating system, including domain services for centralized authentication and authorization of users and computers in a domain. Question number two, and this is one of the behavioral type. Tell me about yourself. And you just want to tell the interviewer how you got to where you are in your career, including how you got in this interview before him all the way up until how you got into the interview with him and where you plan on going from here in your tech career. Just keep it tech. Don't go off into, you know, old family stories or nothing while mentioning something significant, small, outside of your work life, it's okay. We don't want to start telling personal stories and stuff. We wanna keep this as efficient as possible, so we're gonna to stick to our career, technology aspect of that, where we came from, and where we wanna go. Question number three, what is a hypervisor? A hypervisor is software that creates and manages VMs or virtual machines on host hardware. Using a hypervisor, you can quickly deploy virtual computing systems like servers and even Windows desktops. Windows uses a hypervisor called Hyper-V. And in a way, this is creating your own cloud on-premise at your location. Virtual machines and virtual infrastructure is just it's the same thing as cloud infrastructure. So you kind of create your own small cloud right there on premises when you use virtualization. Sometimes in an interview, you'll get scenario based questions. And so this next question is going to be one of those. So question four is you get three tickets that come in at the same time. Which one would you do first and why? The first one is from the CEO. He can't access his email account. The second one is from an accounting clerk. They can't get on the internet. And the third one is from your buddy in sales and he can't print some document. Which one are you gonna do first and why? I'm gonna give you a second to think about that on yourself and then I'm gonna tell you what I would do. Right. And this is probably going to be the right answer. 
right? So, the one I do first, without a doubt, hands down, is the CEO ticket because it's the CEO of the company. This is the, the top person responsible for your job. But if nothing else, if the CEO can't access his email, it could cost the company money if he misses an important email or deadline or something. So not only is your job at stake because you kept the CEO of the company waiting, but if you cost the CEO, uh, the company, if you cost the company any amount of money, you, your do job is definitely on the line. So that one gets done first. The second one is from a clerk in accounting and they can't get on the internet. Well, that's going to be the second ticket because, um, you know, accounting is not as important as the CEO per se in the moment, but definitely more important than your homeboy in sales, right? Especially with a printer thing. You got to get that clerk in accounting back on the internet so they can do their job. Then you can go handle your homeboy in sales, say, hey, which, what kind of problem you having? Is your printer? Oh, I see what the problem is. Need a little update. Boop, boop, boop. Got you, fam. We on here. And we still, we come back to work the next day. You feel me? Question number five, what is SSH? SSH stands for Secure Shell. It is a network protocol for secure remote administration of computer systems over unsecured networks like the internet. SSH creates an encrypted connection between two devices for secure communication over public networks. For question number six, we're going back to um, situational type questioning and that is what is the most frustrating support situation you've had to deal with and how did you handle it and when you ask this question just be honest if you're coming from a help desk or a desk side support or any other entry level type IT positions or maybe even not entry level you should have some experience where uh, you may have gotten a little frustrated by what was going on with the situation. So all you got to do is be honest, tell them about that situation. You always want to think about these type of situations before you go to interviews anyway, just in case you're asked a question like this, because they are pretty common. These are pretty common questions. You'll be able to, you know, have something to look back on and point to when you're asked the question. But if you're, if you're one of those, you know, um, wild eagles that want to become a system administrator with uh, before going through help desk or any entry level you're going to start your it career on it on um you know junior sys admin and you think you can you can get the position based on your knowledge then by all means uh you're just gonna have to give them a frustrating situation you had at a previous employment um you know, if in fact you've worked before or a frustrating situation and how you handle it, you know, in life that maybe you can connect or correlate with some situation you could face in IT. Question number seven, what is a domain? A domain is a collection of devices or resources, usually computers, but it can also be users, applications, and networks. And these devices are controlled by a common set of rules and or permissions. And these rules and permissions are centrally managed, usually in Active Directory. Question number eight, why do you wanna be a junior system admin? And don't say to make more money, but nah, I mean, seriously, just, you know, be honest. Why do you want to be a junior system administrator? Of course, obviously, uh, you want to move up in IT and money is going to play a factor, but don't emphasize making more money. Usually, if you're progressing from a help desk or you're progressing from entry level IT, you kind of know what direction you want to go in. You got some foundational knowledge. You're moving across the uh, chessboard of your career. So you generally can answer this question. Question number nine, what is DHCP? Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It allows a host to distribute dynamically IP addressing and configuration information to clients in the domain on the network. So a centralized, usually a server, 
distributes the IP addresses, the DNS information, and the gateway information to the individual computers on the network in the office building around the building. And the last question, this is another, um, you know, situational or behavioral question. And this is a really common question and you could probably get it and you've probably gotten it before. And that is, why should we hire you? And it's usually always the last question too. But why should we hire you? And you got to come up with a convincing reason why they should hire you, whether it be your background experience from being on help desk for this many years and being able to do this and diagnose this and troubleshoot that, or whether it be from an aspect of um, no IT background and trying to get into the career, but you're passionate about uh, technology and you studied and you've got this certification or you've learned this about um, system administration. And also you could tell why your particular attributes will be beneficial to the department or the company or the role, your particular strengths and interests. And that was the last question. So we discussed five technologies, five soft skills, and 10 junior system administrator interview questions that you might be faced with if you want to put yourself on a roadmap to becoming a junior system administrator or you're interested in becoming a systems administrator, these are some of the things that can help you out with that. And so that's gonna be the end of this particular video, fam. And you know, I would be remiss if I did not remind you to smash that like button so we can get these videos in front of people who could use this information and comment in the comment section about your particular IT journey or ask a question about something that we've discussed in this video. And until next time, family, peace.